sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. If I were to tell you that this is actually a picture of Lane Cove National Park, this is Lane Cove National Park in Sydney, and if I were to tell you that this Lane Cove National Park is actually damaged by human intervention, you might be surprised because it looks like it's quite pure, like the actual environment looks really nice and clean. But if I showed you a couple of the other examples, we have, for example, lots of visitors, so tourists and other visitors visit Lane Cove National Park on a daily basis. And this obviously could lead to you know, rubbish being left, this could lead to native species being hurt in some way. So the tourists could have some impact on the environment. You have introduced species. For example, the fox is a problem in Lane Cove National Park. And this introduced species was introduced by humans and it's actually killing all the native wildlife. And again, you also have things like you know, the water itself being used by humans. This could lead to, again, more rubbish or different types of impact on the environment. So even though Lane Cove National Park is actually being you know, controlled and ideally they minimize the impact of the humans, there's still some impact. So most ecosystems will have some impact of humans, especially if they're close to humans. And Lane Cove National Park is in the middle of Sydney, so there are humans that have their interventions and they have their actual damage or impact on the environment. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because Dot Point itself says identify the impact of humans in the ecosystem study. So identify means name. So we have to name some of the impact of humans in the ecosystems you studied. And they might be similar to Lane Cove National Park or they could be quite different. So we're going to name quite a few different types of impacts. And you've got to think about which one is relevant for your ecosystem that you studied. So these are the, generally the most obvious impacts of humans on society and on the, on the actual ecosystems. We've got land clearance. What I mean by that is obviously, for example, this here is a picture which is somewhere in Australia. And you can imagine maybe a couple of millions of years ago, or even a couple of thousands of years ago, all of this would have been forest. And now you can see the forest in the dark green. So the dark green would be the forest. But most of the actual land got cleared. So most of this is light green, which is just grass. This, is, this didn't used to be the place. So this used to be in place of forests. So now they've removed the forest and they've got just this land. And when we clear land, we obviously clear habitats as well. We destroy habitats, which means we have a loss of animals and plants that we kill off. That's one problem. Most problems in Sydney, most areas in Sydney and Australia are affected by it. Some form of land clearance. Even in the national parks where you clear land for making roads or buildings, it will still affect the actual native wildlife and flora and fauna somehow. We also have the idea of slash and burn. This is a farming technique. And what they do is they want to clear some more land. So what they do is they just actually burn off the land around it to clear that land. And obviously this makes more destruction of habitats which can kill more native animals and plants. Animals plus plants. So slash and burn is also a problem in some ecosystems in Australia. Now the use of pesticides, this is especially important if you have an ecosystem which is close to farms, because these pesticides, they're used to kill pests on actual plants for the crop. For example, if you have wheat crop, the pesticides will be used to kill the pests to make sure there's no grasshopper eating the actual wheat, which is not a problem, but the problem is these pesticides can run off. I mean by runoff is you can imagine a river. If there's a river close by to a farm, so this blue is supposed to be the river, and these pesticides could enter from the farm. So I'm going to draw the pesticides in green. They could enter the farm and then travel down the stream and go to different places. And because these are chemicals which are meant to kill things, they can actually also damage native wildlife and plants. So these use of pesticides in the form of runoff, so in running off to different places, could kill plants and animals as well. And that's especially a problem if your actual ecosystem is close to farms. Now what is erosion? Erosion is if we have mud or rocks coming off and just sliding away. So you might have seen these massive mudslides. That'd be an example of a really big erosion event. But usually just, you know, if we have anything that comes off. So here, 
this is how it should be. And then rain or storms have just over time eroded this whole beach or this whole rocky area and now it's half eroded. And erosion happens also because we remove trees. So when we remove trees, trees are meant to keep soil in place and the less trees there are, the easier it is for soil to escape and run off. So the problem with erosion is again it just it just destroys the, the actual environment. So it destroys the ecosystem because all of a sudden there is no more plants and animals that can live there because there's no more plants and animals that can live off just pure soil. You know, there's no more grass, there's no more trees that fall run off. So erosion is a big problem, especially in areas where you have human intervention when it comes to removing of trees for whatever reason, because trees have to hold the soil in place. Another problem could be the increase in soil salinity and acidification. Soil salinity, salinity means salt levels. This also happens often because we remove trees. So the soil levels inside soil can increase because we remove trees. Or different things as well, but trees would be one example. And the problem with that is if there's too much salt. So here we have got too much salt. And that just means that nothing can grow anymore. So the soil is not fertile anymore. So we call this, we have degraded soil because it means it's less quality and because less quality it means less can grow. And same thing with acidification. Acidification means the pH changes. The pH is a measure of acidity. Now, all different animal plants, specific plants, all different plants have their optimum pH. So for example, an apple tree will grow in a pH of six. If you change the pH, that means the apple tree couldn't grow anymore. So by changing the pH of the soil, it also means that certain things can't grow anymore and we have degraded the quality of the soil. And these happen because of human intervention mostly. Now we talked about introduced species. So we said the fox earlier, the fox in, in Lane Cove National Park, that kills a lot of native wildlife. And the cane toad is also an example of an introduced species. So introduced species. And what that word introduced species means, it has been introduced from somewhere and from Europe or from, from South America. The cane toad actually comes from South America, I'm pretty sure. The fox comes originally from it comes from Europe, and because these have no more, these have, have no natural predator. They have no natural predator. That means they can just go crazy. They basically can eat everything they want. They compete with the native animals and wildlife, and over time, they make all the native, many of the native animals extinct. So they, that can lead to extinction. It can lead to the extinction of, not of the actual introduced species, but of the native species. So it's bad for the animals that lived here for millions of years these introduced species. And obviously they come because of human intervention. We might have brought them here by ships or whatever else. And the last one is obviously pollution. And pollution could come in different forms. It could be the pollution of the atmosphere by pumping in um, carbon dioxide causing global warming. Or it could be pollution just, you know, garbage, leaving garbage or other different types of waste, which could be a problem for marine, so ocean, or land animals. But pollution is also a problem. So dot point says identify, which means name. Name impacts of humans in this ecosystem studied. So in the ecosystem you would have studied, there might have been some of these would have been relevant, and you've got to think about which ones are relevant. But the, quite a few of the important ones were like land clearance, the fact that if we clear land, we destroy habitats. Slash and burn, slash and burn farming, which means also we just destroy more habitats. The use of pesticides, which can cause runoff, which kills plants and animals close by. We could have erosion, which happens when we remove trees. That means the soil is less stable and it can move around quite a bit. And that landslide can lead to a loss of habitats, of trees and of plants and of animals. An increase in salinity, which is salt levels, and acidification of soil, which means the actual soil is has degraded in quality. It is not as good as it used to be. That can also happen due to human intervention. We've got the idea of introduced species. These cause native animals and plants to become extinct because they can take over the environment, compete with resources for the local ones, and local ones might lose out. And then we've got pollution. For example, global warming, which can cause a decrease, an increase in the temperature, which means certain animals won't be able to survive anymore, or just leaving around garbage or different types of pollution, which can cause direct damage to both plants and animals as well. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching.